Hello Floss Tube. It's Brandy. It's good to see you guys again. So I'm not very good at this. Um, I posted the first video that I filmed like a week after I filmed it. So then I filmed another video like two days after I posted the first one, but I still haven't posted it. Anyway, all of this is to say that I'm making another film today. So there's actually going to be two films up. Uh, or two videos up. One is the one that I just last filmed like four days ago. And then, um, and then this one. Uh, and I wanted to come on again because I wanted to say thank you to everybody who's subscribed and left such awesome comments and um, been really interactive. It's been a lot of fun uh, chatting with people and, um, and it's just neat because you know you put something out into the world and you never know what the return is going to be. And to have people uh, respond in such a friendly and encouraging way is encouraging. So anyway, um, I feel really weird. Like my hair is being strange. My lips. So my lips were like super duper pale. So I put color on them and now they seem like, wow. Anyway, this is the day I'm having. It's Tuesday today. Uh, November, it's election day. So I, Today is my favorite day of the week because Molly doesn't have any dance um, and I don't have any appointments or places I need to be on most Tuesdays. So Tuesday is like the most chill day at our house that we have in a week. So it gives me a chance to uh, just get a lot done. So instead of getting things done, I'm filming a video for fun, <laughs> but oh well. <laughs> um, anyway. I thought I would do a couple of things. I'm going to go over a couple of whips. I'm going to talk about the, like, know your stitcher, I think is what it is in the hashtags. Um, and in that is, I'm going to kind of share some of the other things that I do. So anyway, let's get started with whips. So first of all, I've been stitching almost exclusively, um, not for myself this week, for, um, for a lady who asked me to make her some stuff. So I'm doing it. Um, and so mostly I've been stitching um, for Spacious Skies by Heartstring Samplery. And it's been a lot of fun to stitch. I've really enjoyed stitching this one. Except, so there it is. Except the flag. I've decided I hate stitching flags because I always think that it should just like I know that every sample sampler flag like has waves in it and that means that you have to like offset your lines and stuff but I don't know anyway I had to rip this flag out probably at least three times um, because I kept stitching it wrong and I'm still not done with it so I'm almost done though I have hope um, Anyway, besides the flag trauma, it's been a lot of fun to stitch. Um, the other thing, the only other, no, that's not true. The other thing I've stitched, which let me just say, this was a free Lizzie Kate. And it's bird over, moon over blackbird. Um, and I didn't have any of the colors except for one. And so I just winged it with what I had on hand which in hindsight is not the best approach to always take. But I really didn't care in that I just wanted something quick that I could take on the road with me or um, my husband and I play Pathfinder, which is a variation of Dungeons and Dragons because we're nerds like that. Um, and so we had a Pathfinder game um, on Sunday after church. And so I took this and I stitched a bunch of it while I was there. And so it's nice to just be able to do some handwork um, while you're in a meeting or in traffic. Yes, I stitch in traffic. Um, but let me preface that, not when I'm like actively driving, because that would be rude or dangerous. Anyway, don't, don't stitch and drive. I need to have that probably on a bumper sticker. Um, anyway. The thing about this is I didn't like the colors at all. Like it was not good. And 
so I changed, or I didn't change anything. What I did was I, I coffee bathed it, coffee bathed it. I took instant coffee and I dabbed it all over. Um, and then it sat on the cookie sheet and then this morning I came out and it looks like all crispy around the edges and it feels all crispy too. And it smells like coffee. Um, and so I like that it's all crispy and crunchy. My original plan was I was just going to make like a little pillow thing out of it, but I really I like the edges a lot. So I don't know what I'm going to do now. I haven't decided, but anyway, that's that. And then the other thing that I've been working on, I just worked on it a little bit last night um, while I was at dance, waiting for my girl. Y'all, dance is a part-time job for me. Not as a dancer, as a, as a chauffeur. It's crazy. And we're getting ready for the holiday season, so there's like all these extra practices. Oy, it's a lot. Um but I love her and she loves to dance and it's her therapy. I'm not really therapy, but it's like her safe space and it's all good. If your kids want to dance, find a way to let them dance. Say I. Okay. This is the other thing I've been working on. And it's from that book that I showed you last week, the folk art needlepoint. Um, and it's just, it's a purse. Let's see. There's the original. That's the original. And then here is a picture of the charted piece, the newly charted piece. And then I'm stitching it on the muslin because I started this like a long time ago. That's as far as I've gotten. And somewhere on there, whoops, somewhere on there I got off on the wrong count, like at the core of the piece kind of thing. And so everything's all ever so slightly off. And I think it's going to be okay. I'm trusting it's going to be okay. Mostly because it's for me. And I don't know exactly what I'm even going to do with this. I don't know how I'm going to finish it. Um, and I just, like I said um, in my other video, like when I stitch for myself, I just don't care as much about the details. So that's me. So those are the things I've been stitching. Um, so the Know Your Stitcher stuff. Let's talk business. Where do you live? Well, I live in Oregon. I think I mentioned that before. I live in a little town about 45 miles or minutes um, east of Portland. So um, pretty close to Mount Hood. I grew up um, at the base of Mount Hood in an even smaller town called Welch's. And um, yeah, so we live here in a small town called Sandy and um, and I love it most days most days I love it um, I've, I've lived all over I've lived in Australia I've lived in Utah I've lived in Southern Oregon we've lived in the city um, I've lived in Montana so I've lived in a few places um, Anyway, what do you do for a living? So I don't actually have a job, but um, like I mentioned in the first video, I do have a podcast with my husband called uh, The Road Home to You, and we've been doing that since about May, um, and we're hoping that as we continue on, that will become a source of income. Right now, um, not so much, and it, it does take some money to produce uh, a podcast. So, um, with our, with the sponsorships that we have right now, um, we are just kind of paying for the show to exist. So hopefully it'll turn into something that, that kind of puts some money in our bank account. Um, but it might not, in which case that's fine too. What I also do though, is, um, I mentioned that I just, I make, I make things and I mentioned my gnomes in my first episode. And so I thought I'd show some off to you because it's not just that I make gnomes. I make gnomes with a heart. So this is Sven. Sven was the first gnome that I made. And he is wonky. He is super wonky. He's like all flippy floppy. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, his little jingle bell. 
Um, his shoes are wonky. Everything about him is wonky. Um, he, but he's got little like snowflakes on his cloak, which is funny. Um, and I love him because he's kind of cute and wonky. Um, but it, it made me, because I've always loved gnomes ever since I was a really tiny little girl, because um, I have a Scandinavian background, or ancestry. Um, and so growing up, like Christmas time was always like, we talked about gnomes and tomties. And um, so I decided I wanted to, like when I made Sven, I was like, this guy's got a story. Like he's telling me a story. And so I wrote him a story. So then I started making other gnomes and, and they all have stories to tell. So now I run, this is gonna sound silly, I run a gnome adoption agency <laughs> called Every Home Needs a Gnome. Um, and um, every gnome that gets adopted comes with this book and it's got a little bit of or a book like this. It's got a little bit of the history of gnomes and um, a little bit of story about them. Um, it tells their own story and and then it gives you, the adoptee, a little place to write notes about your gnome, if you so choose. Um, this gnome is my favorite. His name is Lenny. Actually, it's Leonard. Um, eyes on him. Leonard. And I call him Lenny. Lenny is, Lenny is a little hopeful gnome because um, Lenny grew up in um, in an orphanage. He grew up without without a mom and dad, um, and so Lenny's had a really difficult past, and he's seen a lot of sadness, but he's also full of hope because he's seen great things in the world too, and he's met a lot of wonderful creatures. And so he knows that the world has as much good in it as it has bad. And so he wants to spread kindness to the world. Um, and I love Lenny. He just, when I made him and I put his little hat on him, it always likes to cover up his nose. But when I put his little hat on him, I just fell immediately in love. Um, Cause I mean, look at that. Like, look at that, That's, he's so cute. He's so cute. So anyway, Lenny. Um, but I also make little um, ornament gnomes. Um, like there's that one. So see, like this is how how big they are. That's pretty small. Um, so for like Christmas trees or whatever. Um, this one here is ready for Easter. He's got little um, bunny ears and a bunny tail. Because who doesn't want to dress up as an Easter bunny? Even gnomes do. Um, so, so I make gnomes. That's what I do. Um, and hence the name, every home needs a gnome. Um, but I started off, uh, a while back making books also. And, um, so I've made a bunch of hardbound journals and this is my other Etsy store. <laughs> so much to keep up with. Um, but this is, um, I've got handbound journals that are just blank inside. Um, and this is a travel journal. I mean, it doesn't have to be for travel, but with all the stamps and stuff, I thought it kind of seemed travel-y. Um, and then I also do softbound journals, which are also blank inside. Um, but, um, I, but then I also have like lined ones if you want lined, or I've got little, like this is a recipe book. Um, I have some that are like for sermon notes. Um, so anyway, so I make books and I make gnomes and I cross stitch and I make a podcast. That is what I do. I used to work, um, with, um, oh, I mentioned this in my last video. I used to work with youth offenders, um, as a residential counselor and I loved that job. Um, I've also been a preschool teacher. I've been a teacher's assistant, um, for kids that are needing assistance with reading, um, so I've done, mostly I've worked with people. So this is a new world for me. Um, okay, my time is running out. Do I have any kids? Yes, I've mentioned them before. Evan and Molly. Evan is almost 19. Molly is 16. If you want more information about them, go back to video one. 
pets. Good Lord. If y'all don't know the dogs by now, I don't know. Um, I've got Bella and Milo and we have a cat named Stevie. Um, Steve, so, um, we had two cats that we were supposed to just be watching for the summer and then they became ours because the family we were watching them for moved to Texas. So we got the cats and then they got pregnant. So then we had like a thousand cats and we kept one and we kept the runt of both of the litters. And it was just like when she was born, she was just this little tiny little gray ball. And, um, and then she grew and she turned into this really black little cat. And now she's just solid black and she's still very petite. Um, but we thought that she was a he when we were naming cats. And so Molly named Steve, Steve. And then Steve became a girl. And so we named Steve, Stevie. And we just tell the cat that she's named after Stevie Nicks. Because really, right? Um, all right, hobbies besides stitching. Um, hobbies. I do music. That's what I do. <laughs> I forgot. Um, I'm part of the worship team at our church. And um, if you follow Beth with Heartstring Samplery, you might recognize me from some of her videos um, or one of her videos from the last year's Summer Bash. I play the cajon um, in in the band that was playing at her house. So uh, we're called the hypocrites. And... Um, Mostly we play in Beth's backyard and we've played at a couple farmers markets and stuff. So it's nothing very serious, but we have a good time with it. So, um, favorite movie. Oh, hands down. Not even a question. Stand by me. Um, that movie was so transformative. I was, um, I was about 12 years old, 11 or 12 years old when that movie came out in 1986. And, um, and I went to go see it with my two best friends in the movie theater. We, um, you know, we got to like go see a rated R movie without any adults. And um, the leeches scene, it just did us in. It was the funniest thing ever. So um, for a lot of reasons, though, that movie just pulls up my heartstrings. Um, and I can't say enough good things about it. And River Phoenix was a just a brilliant actor and it's so sad that he's gone um favorite tv show i have a lot of tv shows that i've really enjoyed i love the the uh, oh my gosh what is it called the great british bake off baking show you know the one where there's all the bakers in the tent and there's um mary and paul hollywood that's a great show because it's so positive. I love that. Um, it's really like everybody's just cheering everybody on and that's cool. Um, but I also just watched mind hunter and that's a really good show too. If you like criminal stuff, um, favorite book, uh, again, the, the book that stand by me came from is called different seasons and it's a book with four novellas in it by Stephen King. Um, Shawshank Redemption is another one that's in there. So, um, it's a great book, but also I really love any book by Sandra Dallas. Um, she writes kind of historical pieces and oftentimes they're set around a quilting bee or some kind of a quilt, which I love. Favorite music. I can't even begin. Um, one word that best describes you. I don't even have a clue all over the place but that's three words but it's one phrase so I don't know you decide um anyway I think that's it you guys I don't really have that much I just wanted to say thank you wanted to give you guys a little bit more background on me and um I think that's it behind me can you see that it's a naked lady um my husband and I are both Oh, the camera's tipping. I'll just hold it. My husband and I are both um, big art nerds. And we love Gustav Klimt. Who made that? 
I wish it was an original, but it's not. Anyway, um, that's all for now. You guys have an awesome day. It's sunny and beautiful here in the Pacific Northwest, or at least in my chunk of it. I hope it is too where you live. And I'll talk at you later. All right, stitch on. Bye.